Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome back to uh, Learn Piezo. Uh, today we're going to we're going to take a question about a piezo actuator. And uh, piezo electric actuators uh, can be of a uh, you could say two types. Only well, there's many different ways you can classify and group these uh these devices but let's say that let's classify them as two types um we have the one type which is ultrasonic and these always um you know the motion of the stator whether it's linear or it's uh, rotational um they're not um they're not ultrasonic. They're not moving at an ultrasonic frequency, but the mechanisms which are creating that linear or rotational behavior is ultrasonic. And hence, most likely is going to depend on resonance to make that uh, baby work. The other type is not ultrasonic. Well, as the name implies, it's not ultrasonic, um, and it uses other principles in order to, again, achieve maybe linear and rotational behavior. Uh, sorry, a little bit. I've got some allergies right now. Um, so we had a we had a uh, viewer, a fan uh, of the of uh, Learn Piezo. Uh, ask about this specific motor uh from pi um so this is not any this is not uh, a uh sponsored video from this company um and by no means it is is an advertisement or is it a a critique of it it's just uh found this motor was asked this question and uh here we are describing how it works so this is basically the internal the simplified version of the internals of this device. We have this flex fixed platform here. So this this metal piece is fixed. Um then we have this bottom this is the stator which can move. And you can imagine these may be on rollers. And we have two piezos here. We have piezo number one and piezo number two. And this is a D33 type of piezo. And this is a D15 type. So this is shear and this is extensional. Extensional shear, extensional shear, extensional shear. And basically, what you see here is a instant and a moment in time where we have this extensional piece extending and we have this shear pushing this um, stator forward so this uh, extensional piezo forces the uh, piezo stack to contact the stator applying force applying a pressure and then this d15 then applies a sh then uh, is excited via shear uh, in its polarization direction and whatnot. So it then it it the angle increases and this stator is then pushed forward. And again, this is then when this one is going to contact, it's then going to apply that voltage. So it's going to get it's going to go from this angle. From a negative angle to a positive one. So it starts off like this and it ends up like this. Just by changing the voltage applied. Again, for for a and this has to be biased. This is this is not normally a quadrilateral, this is biased uh toward one dimension. So we have our uh Polarization direction, there's voltages applied here. And by timing these appropriately, 
we can, we can get the stator to move forward. We have these opposing legs um, then um, always allowing us to keep moving that stator down. Here's a couple images from the relevant patent. Um, you can see here what uh, the stator looks like. Um, there's actually two driving stacks supporting uh, the stator or what we call the moving member. And here's a look at it, uh, kind of showing the two different extensional motions. These are multiple stacks. These are this depicts only one piezoelectric element. Rather, there are several piezoelectric elements, and this is very common for any application requiring a significant amount of displacement. You will need to have stack actuators in order to achieve. Um, reasonable displacement levels in the micron range for reasonable voltages put in like less than 200 volts you're going to put in less than 200 volts or yeah it would be this way right it'd be less than 200 volts uh and you want to achieve a significant amount of displacement you're going to have to go with the multi-layer approach So now let's go in and talk about so the equations. So let's talk about the equations and let's and, and, and to do that let's talk about the steps. So let's take the two stacks. So let's think we have this block and we have another block. So we have the D33 block or the K33 block and the D15 block. So um, what should we do? Uh, let's talk about the D33 block because it's sort of simple. So we have our stator down here that's going to be able to move. And the first thing we have to do is first make contact. First, make contact. And that's actually easy to define how that works. So basically, the change in length of a piezo equals the d coefficient, which in this case would be d33 multiplied by the voltage it's really that simple this exactly correlates to uh, the strain equals the electric field times the d coefficient however in this case we'll have to add something special because we have a multi-layer structure you have to add multi multiply by n uh, that's uh, something like that so you have to add a multiply by n factor and the reason is because we have multiple layers. So you'll get more displacement. Every layer you add, you apply that same voltage, you're gonna get twice the displacement. So that's the first step. You have to apply voltage enough that there's, there becomes a contact right there. And then let's go to the second step. Step number two is apply force. And in this case, since the uh, since the stator is fixed, the stator is fixed, we have to use the equation. Uh, to determine the blocking force of the piezo. So in the learn piezo uh, lecture seven, part G, I derived this equation for a um, a piezoelectric D three three stack. Um, Okay, didn't ask for that, but whatever. Um, with um, 
the area, the DC3, the voltage, the length, and the compliance, uh, which is all very important. So practically, I don't know how much force you need to apply, but it's something you have to determine experimentally. This is not going to be, I think, a theoretical value. It's determined by how, what the you know what friction is and <clears throat> what 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 kind of displacement you're applying with the D one D one five actuator as well. Uh, so you can learn about the blocking force through this equation. Uh, essentially, the difference, I think, in so we were just talking about um, how. Uh, how adding layers to this would then increase the blocking force substan substantially uh, because you are both you're keeping the voltage the same but your length is decreasing so basically this blocking force it really if you look at it it is more you can look at it from voltage and length and and the length is referring to if you have a cube or you have a rectangle it's this this dimension right there that's the length i'm calling it the length or the thickness uh this is the electric field so you can replace this then with the electric field um which is basically your voltage over the length of one layer this is the thickness of one layer. Um, well then you have to calculate this to get the force you want, and there'll be again multiple, uh, multiple stacks driving that actuation. So now we'll talk about step three. The shear. So the shear, you can say it has three different states. It has the normal state where you're not applying any, um, this is the polarization direction. Uh, you're not applying any voltage. It has the other state where you are applying a voltage. And it has another state yet where you're applying another another um, voltage to alter the uh, to alter the the angle really. And in this case, where the positive voltage is going here and the negative voltage is going there. In this case, negative voltage is going there and the positive voltage is going there. And you can reference my <clears throat> videos on piezoelectric shear. I think it's lecture 315, uh, lecture 15, uh, piezo shear. And you search that on YouTube and you write, you learn piezo, and you should be able to come up with this um, uh, that lecture. Um, but let's continue. Um, <clears throat> so. What do we want to? So you can also derive, just like we derived uh, the equations for blocking force, you can also derive that for, for the 3 3. You can also derive it for the shear. Um, in this case, you know, the angle. You, you, you start with the equation the angle is equal to the d coefficient times the electric field uh, in the 3 3 direction. Uh, that's how you uh not three three sorry in the three direction uh that's how you then or you could say in the uh, sorry yeah, it's in the one direction haha <laughs> um uh, that's how you end up with the uh angle uh finally um so um i guess this would be one one or something right um so let's uh so this would then tell you so how do you determine the length um you do the side approximation so this is the 
angle that has changed. So normally you would do the sine of the angle, right? Uh, but in this case, it's a sine. Of, it's approximately just the angle itself in radians, and you multiply that by the uh, length, or what I'm calling length, and that's going to give you um, this distance right here, the opposite over the adjacent, right? So that's going to give you the delta length. It's not the length delta length, it's the, uh, but I'll call it delta length, just for easy, easy, ease of use, ease of terminology. So you have that change um, in length. Uh, but you also know that there will be, just like we had to have two stages here, we had to make contact, we had to apply force. There will be part of this where you will be you will be be partially constrained so you'll have a force applied opposing this bend from the stator, but the force will be less than the blocking force, so you'll both have move you'll have movement. And you also have a force applied. <clears throat> but uh, so uh, in these, in this case, uh, you can do the calculations and determine what that angle needs to be in order to accomplish the rate of movement, the rate of movement of that stator in that direction, where these, where this extension piece goes down and this piece goes goes left to right. And just also notice that in order to get maximum displacement, they probably started with a negative voltage and then went to a positive voltage. So they get the maximum angle swing. So they started at a negative angle and they went to a positive angle. And this allowed them to, uh, this, is a, this is what they're showing right here, that when this, after this context, they will then switch over to this state. So these two states. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. <clears throat> I really apologize for my voice, but I'd rather have this video get out than not. Thank you so much.